Hi everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilovepathology.com. Starting from this session, I would be revisiting some of my topics which I had covered earlier because those were covered long back. Okay, and one such important topic is cellular adaptations. We will learn about the general concepts of cellular adaptations, and in detail, we will try to understand the concepts of atrophy. Right. So, in the next few minutes, we will look into what cellular adaptations are, what are the different types of adaptations, and then we will move on to understand the concepts of atrophy. First and the foremost thing, before we learn these cellular adaptations, let's get the concepts right. Firstly, we should understand that all the cells in our body will be in the state of homeostasis. You know? the constancy of the internal environment is maintained and when such cells are exposed to some kind of stress or some abnormality these cells tries to adapt to this new abnormal conditions and that's called as cellular adaptation now if the cells are unable to adapt then what happens is the cell injury no because the cells are not able to adapt the cells are now injured and if the injurious agent or the stress is mild and transient it goes through a process called reversible injury and once the inciting agent is taken off it gets back to its normal state now if the injurious agent is severe and progressive then it results in irreversible injury and two major forms of irreversible injury are necrosis and apoptosis which are nothing but the forms of cell death if you are a student of pathology and this is the first chapter the entire chapter will be around these concepts right firstly you will learn about adaptation then the cell injury reversible irreversible and necrosis and apoptosis so, in today's session, we will be learning about the adaptation. Now, what are these cellular adaptations? As I told you, this is a new state for that given cell which is exposed to stress, right? And this new state allows them to survive and continue to function in this abnormal environment. And that is called as cellular adaptation. Now, what are the types of adaptations? There are four important types of adaptations. One is atrophy, two hypertrophy, three hyperplasia, and the last one is metaplasia. If you look at this illustration, I have tried to illustrate these in different sizes and in different color. You will understand once I talk about all these cellular adaptations. Now, let us try to understand what atrophy is. So, atrophy is basically decrease in the number and size of the cells of a given organ. So, remember, there is decrease in the number of cells as well as the size of the cells of the given organ. And atrophy is broadly categorized into physiologic atrophy and pathologic atrophy. So, what is this physiologic atrophy? That means atrophy which occurs in which occurs under physiological conditions. For example, there is involution of uterus after parturition, which means you know, normally what happens during the pregnant state, the uterus has to enlarge to accommodate the growing fetus. Right? Now, after the birth of the baby, after delivery, the uterus will come back or regain its normal shape and size and that's called as involution of uterus after parturition and that's an example of physiologic atrophy. Another important example of physiologic atrophy is all of our brain, you know, they shrink in size due to aging process. And another example of physiologic atrophy is, you know, the atrophy of the embryonic structure such as notochord, thyroglossal, duct and that is during the fetal development. This is as part of normal development. These embryonic structures, they are atrophied. 
So these are some of the examples of physiologic atrophy. One, because of aging process. Two, because of the involution of the uterus after the delivery of the child. Now let us try to understand pathologic atrophy, which means there is underlying pathological causes for the given tissue or organ to be atrophied. The types of pathologic atrophy includes disuse atrophy, nutrition or starvation atrophy, ischemic atrophy, neuropathic atrophy and pressure atrophy. Let us try to understand one by one. Disuse atrophy, as the name says, if you do not use that particular tissue, then that organ or tissue will be atrophied. For example, immobilization of a fracture bone and resulting in complete bed rest or bed rest for a longer duration of time what happens for example look at this because of immobilization of the limb there is decreased workload and over a period of time the muscles tend to get atrophied okay so that is pathologic atrophy because of not using that muscle so this is a normal muscle illustration and that's the illustration of the atrophied muscle because of disuse the second example is nutritional or starvation atrophy. The most common you know, example we can think about is profound protein calorie malnutrition. You can easily identify the severity of atrophy of the entire body. The third one is ischemic atrophy as it says because of atherosclerosis there is narrowing of the blood vessels and that narrowing leads to reduction of the flow of blood leading to ischemia and this is called as ischemic atrophy you know whenever there is atherosclerosis and then narrowing there will be atrophy of the most of the organs in the body and that's ischemic atrophy which is pathologic atrophy neuropathic atrophy for example damage to nerve is the common example you can think of is poliomyelitis you know that polio is a disease which can cause damage to the motor neurons leading to muscle weakness and atrophy and that muscle weakness and atrophy is because of the loss of nerve stimulation right this is the example of pathologic atrophy which is neuropathic atrophy the last one is the pressure atrophy and that's because of compression you know, of the tissues for a long period of time. Now, what are the conditions where you can expect compression? For example, say consider the same example of immobilization of a fractured limb. If the bandage, if the cast is very, very tight, you know, and that can also result in muscle atrophy because of tight compression. Of course, there is disuse atrophy, but then because of tight bandage or compression of the muscular tissue, the atrophic process is hastened. Second example of pressure atrophy is whenever there is increased intracranial pressure, it leads on to optic atrophy. Okay, Remember, pressure atrophy can occur anywhere in the body when there is pressure from a growing tumor or when there is pressure from external surfaces in the form of tight compression, the joining tissues and organs are compressed leading on to atrophy. So, now we know that there is physiologic atrophy and pathologic atrophy, right? We talked about the uterus and brain as examples of physiologic atrophy and then these are the various pathologic atrophies. Now, once we have understood the concepts of the different types of atrophies, let us see the organs which are atrophied. So, this is your normal brain and this is atrophied brain. It is atrophied because you can see that there is widening of the sulci and the narrowing of the gyri. So, that's how an atrophic brain looks like. So, look at this. This is a pathological atrophy, particularly uh, in the context of Alzheimer's disease, where there is variable corticular atrophy and that is determined by the widening of sulci and narrowing of gyri. So, that's pathological atrophy, not a normal senile atrophy of the brain. Okay, so both are examples of uh, atrophy. One is physiological if it is age induced, another is pathological if it is disease process like Alzheimer's disease. Now, what are the mechanisms for atrophy? Why does the why does the muscle or why does the organ gets shrunken in size and reduction in numbers? And the reason for that is 
one decreased protein synthesis and two increased protein degradation the decreased protein synthesis is basically because of reduction in the trophic signals for example and those trophic signals are those produced by the growth receptors whereas increased protein degradation is by the ubiquitin proteasome pathway whenever there is increased degradation of proteins obviously there will be atrophy of the given tissue or organs now, what are the consequences of pathologic atrophy on organs the consequences it can significantly impact the organ function depending upon the underlying cause for example ischemic atrophy of brain you know it can impair cognitive functions and if there is disuse atrophy of muscles and that can lead to weakness and even decreased mobility so there will be functional impairment of these atrophied organs right so these are the consequences of atrophy so i think with this we have completed understanding the concepts of uh, cellular adaptations the types of adaptations and we have learnt in detail about the atrophy thank you for watching if you have liked this video hit the like button do comment if you have anything to ask if you find this video useful do consider subscribing and do not forget to share okay so i'll be coming out with another uh, interesting topic in the next session till then take care bye bye